right. There you go, wave three. Gotcha. All right, so basically here we'll ha have a PowerPoint presentation. I've gone through this PowerPoint presentation for uh, a lot of people already, and you may already know how this works, but um, in, in options or in any uh, type of instrument you're trading, uh, there's patterns, patterns in the market that keep on repeating. And for option traders, we want to be trading in a wave one, three, and five if we're bullish. Uh, and then for bearish, it could be two, uh, four, or ABC correction. It doesn't matter, but it, let's say we're, because the market is generally bullish, 60 to greater than 60% of the time, uh, we want to use um, some sort of wave, general wave analysis uh, to help us understand if, if we're in a position or if there's a pattern that's setting up for a greater move. All right, so basically um, the, uh, the two setups here, uh, we're, today we're gonna to focus mainly on the third wave, which is uh, part of the Elliott wave structure and then the Gartley mm -hmm. pattern, that's um, something I'll talk about later, but today we're focused on the third wave because this is just an hour session. All right, so basically we have Fibonacci keys Okay, Fibonacci levels. These levels are just um, basically these tools that we use on any platform. They have these measurements called Fibonacci keys. And they do, because everything is working in terms of patterns, Fibonacci levels are a great tool to kind of understand which level that you're at relative to a pullback or an extension. And uh, there's, I guess there's no real secret behind it, but these have worked quite well and you want to be familiar with how to use these levels and plot them on your chart, depending on which time frame that you're looking at. But uh, you got 38.2, 50% retracement, which is around, you know, 50-50 is a bit, you know, aggressive when it pulls back 50%. 61.8 could be oversold, 78, and then 100% pullback would be a double bottom. And then if it breaks through that, then you know you're, the pattern's all wrecked up. But when we use Fibonacci, we have two methods. That's Fibonacci retracements on the pullback, and then we have Fibonacci extensions on the on the on the profit taking or profit levels that we're looking to manage our risk if, in in positions that are long or short. The golden ratio here is 61.8. That's just the the uh, the name or the the uh, the term that's commonly used for whenever price pulls back 61.8. They call that the golden ratio, and I have no idea why. Okay, so some of the general rules for Elliott waves is basically wave two cannot retrace uh, greater than wave one because if it does, then the structure is um, broken. And what this wave two, as most people may um, commonly remember, is that this would be, this would be, this is basically a definition of a higher low. Okay, so if wave one is an impulsive wave higher on whatever time frame you're looking at, mm -hmm. for example, Nvidia today it just ripped up uh, two percent in the morning, within the first thirty minutes into a, a t ending a TGIF cycle. And then after 10 a.m., it pulled back, right? But it never pulled back more than the um, than the initial impulse. So that's kind of what this is a wave one and wave two. This is 
uh, what we call a higher low. Okay, so if it retraces more than uh, the wave one, then the structure is broken. So wave two cannot retrace more than wave one. This is by definition a higher low. So it can be on any time frame. It can be on a daily time frame, candle over candle. If you take a look at Boeing, so if we consider Boeing's impulsive move yesterday with the candle over candle and a pullback today, then that's called a wave two. So in, in theory, if I'm correct, then we are in a wave two, ending a wave two pattern in Boeing. Wave one was yesterday. Today we saw Nvidia move up higher in the TGF cycle. That could be a wave one. It pulled back, we're in a wave two, and we're gonna see if wave two continues to hold or it's gonna end up becoming the beginning of wave three. So if we are in a wave three, then wave three cannot be the shortest wave, right? So uh, it's generally the longest wave. It could take many, many, many days. And the reason why it takes a long time for wave three to develop is because it could be consolidating um, a period of time before it makes that uh, impulsive move higher. But uh, wave three is definitely not the shortest wave. It's definitely longer than one and two. Um, but that is the wave that is um, most desirable. And then wave four, after you've defined wave three, you get a wave four and a wave four pulls back more than, um, and pulls back to the level where it drops below the top of wave one, then uh, you are, then the, the whole pattern is destroyed. So here's an example. So depending on which time frame, so time frame, time frame meaning your trades is important. So you need to know like, is it going to be a swing trade? Is it going to be a day trade? And um, for me, I'm, I'm not the type of person who likes to day trade. So I, I like to always trade swing trade because the nice thing about swing trading is that if you swing something uh, in anticipation for, you know, a wave one, three and five, then depending on the move, like what kind of move you get in that day, sometimes you get in a swing trade and you can be up like 300%. So it ends up becoming a day trade. So that's the nice thing about swing trading because you have, you encapsulate all the day trading uh, tendencies. But, um, and then with, with an extra days to tail expiration. Whereas day trading, uh, in order for it to be, you know, profitable with asymmetric risk, you would force yourself to go into a, um, a weekly uh, contract where you know you're you have you're not only fighting against decay but you're also fighting against the market you're also fighting against a lot of different things and you got to be quick and nimble to be to be able to maneuver in and out of these positions so that's why most people like for me i like to swing trade because not only if we're in the swing trade for a larger move higher but uh, any move that a day trader can experience is also encapsulated uh, or considered in a swing trade. So uh, it's best of both worlds. Whereas day trading, you don't have the luxury of really holding for the next two to three days uh, because that theta decay could be getting could um, catch up and bite you in the butt the next day. Okay, because if the market starts chopping and you get this chopping action like we saw today. Uh, you might, you know, you know, your weekly contracts could be down about 50, 60 percent already. Whereas when you open up ones that expire next week, you're only down maybe 10, 20 percent on a position size that's, you know, acceptable. Okay, so basically, on the left hand here, we have rule number one. This is a general structure of a wave one, two. So it's a higher low. So if something moves up higher in the first um first 30 minutes then it starts pulling back you want to measure that pullback and, and then define that as wave two and this is the time where you would want to use your fibonacci retracement measurement tool to see if it's a 50 percent retracement 38.2 61.8 and uh, generally people like to use those fibonacci tools uh, levels to measure the degree of strength. So if it pulls back only 38.2, you know that the it's a very high tight bull flagging type of pattern in a wave two structure, setting up for wave three. If it's a 50% pullback, then it's like 
50 50 is 50 50 by definition as i also taught told everybody is by definition random so you don't it's 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 a good pullback but it's still random 61.8 could be considered um you know as you know it's tokened as a um coined as a golden ratio but you don't know um but as long as you as long as the rule number one holds and wave two does not exceed the full wavelength of one then 61.8 78.2 they're all still valid and this is where you're literally trying to catch a falling knife and that's the and that's the trade that's why you would have to position or nibble so on a wave one impulsive move higher uh, and then it's starting you start to see a pullback you're trying to you're trying to figure out whether or not this is wave two pulling back and making a higher or low and generally if you if you know if it's a wave two if the market is generally bullish but of course uh, news can come out on that company and just destroy the whole structure really fast but that's the risk you take so that's why you have to define your position size and when you get into a wave when wave two starts to develop, you start to decide whether or not like, you start nibbling at 50%, you start nibbling at 61.8. But if you don't nibble it at all and the move starts to take off on wave three, then you're missing out. Wave two, like I mentioned before, wave two, a uh, rule number two is just showing that wave three is not the shortest wave. Okay, it is, it could be the, it's definitely not the shortest out of one two four and five it's the largest wave okay or the shortest or longest uh, the largest wave is is a little bit tricky because we talked about the nuances between largest and longest so uh, shortest and long longest this is the idea for rule number two but you can have the largest move uh, in wave one um, but that's so basically when I say large long shortest is not the shortest wave it's the longest wave of wave three that means there's a lot more time um, that is considered in the uh, wave three so it takes a lot longer for wave three to develop than wave one wave one is generally faster okay and it could be the largest move but that, that would also imply that the pull wave two could be the largest pullback. Okay, so rule number two states that wave three is not the shortest wave. So it would be the largest wave, not the longest wave, not the largest. I guess it could also be both, but um, it's by definition the not the shortest. So you, when, when I say it's not the shortest, that means it could be a very, very long time for that thing to uh, to develop. All right, and then rule number three, because everything pulls back, once you get a three move and you've identified the top, maybe because it's printing a doji or something like that, or maybe it's Tuesday at 10, 10 a.m., and you get this wave four that, that starts pulling back, that wave four on the pullback cannot enter into wave one. Okay, so if it does, then it violates. So again, you're catching another falling knife. So all these little red uh, lines here indicate a pullback. And that pullback is where you are looking for a continuation wave up. Okay, so this is the general structure of a third wave breakout. So wave two pulls back into it in A, B, C, where ideally A is equal to C. So this is where the Fibonacci queen comes in, right? She likes to do her symmetries. She's very uh, good at geometry, apparently. So you got that wave one, A and B, and they should be symmetric in size. Everything is generally symmetric, especially when you have a whole bunch of algorithms trading the same strategy so they're all in unison and then abc retracement of wave one is either 61.8 or 78.6 so what this entails is that uh they're giving you actually they, we do have some statistics that somebody uh i think it was um tinasser that provided the stats i'll probably have to look for that again 
But uh, there, uh, does anyone have it? I gotta look for that again. But there are some stats that have been provided for Elliot Waves, and I think I'm gonna have to append those stats uh, in this um, in this presentation. I can't find it exactly. I need to find it somewhere in the um, options chat room or something. Okay, so now let's go to some examples. All right, so let's take a look at um, Alibaba. So Alibaba, um, so the main assumption with Alibaba is that are we in a wave, did wave one, so here, if you take a look at this chart right here for Alibaba, and you take a look at these two candles, this one right here was at a low at 170 and this one right here is a low of 169.5.95 so if you take this move and assume that that's wave one right then and then you get this red red candle then the next wave would be two but this two uh collapsed and it closed it actually pierced went right underneath 169.95 which is lower than this candle right here because this candle right here uh it's low is at 170 and this is the 169.95 low so that means that this pattern from this low out of a 170 up to here, that is not wave one, even though I made a 10.76% point, move. That is not a wave one. But had this candle close above, you can see that the gradient here is minus 0.18 degrees. So that's indicating that's a lower low, not a higher low. So what does that entail? It, it means that this these three candles, this in initial impulsive move is not a wave one. This is wave one. So wave one is here, and then it made a high, uh, made a 15.52% move. Okay, and if we and if we measure this retracement, because it did pull back, we can see using this Fibonacci tool, Fibonacci retracement tool. we can see that taking the low and taking the high here shows that the pullback uh, was around approximately 38.2%, which is, uh, oh, there you go, that's great. That's, I need to pin that. So that's a 38.2 retracement of the Alibaba wave one and two. Okay, and then if we, so let me highlight this. So the 50% retracement is highlighted in, in white, and here this is 38.2, so maybe I'll make that into a green color and thicken it up to five. So I made that line right there, 38.2, so as wave one proceeded to move higher, it gapped up, then it started to consolidate at around 38.2. So if we zoom out again, you can see that after wave two was formed, uh, we are in a wave three. So wave three was started back here in um, March, uh, April 3rd. And you can see how long it took, right? It took about how many days as it was running into earnings? Super choppy. So it looks like we're here. It took about um, oops. 
So that took about 96 days for Alibaba to move from $180, I guess, $185, all the way up to $268. So that's wave three. So ideally, you know, wave three is, is good, but I guess option traders like to trade maybe wave one or three and then five. But you can get an idea that this is a wave three. Now we're in this pullback down to uh, wave four. And then after three and four has been defined. So let's measure the pullback on here on Alibaba. So if we assume that 268 is wave three, then uh, the retracement of that, let me do the retracement. So you can see on the candles here that there's a couple, there looks like some sort of support level around that ATR trailing stop at 238. But if we use the Fibonacci retracement measurement tool at around this doji here, you can pick any one of these dojis, but uh, let's pick the middle one here. And then we move and we select the top here, 268 and define, make the assumption that that's wave three, the top of wave three, then you can see that after it moved up as high as 268, it pulled back 50%. So it pulled back 50% right here. So then now after three, we kind of defined four, wave four, and after wave four, is has been found and it holds this level 240.45 then the next wave is obviously wave five so how do we know how much higher can five go well you would use a fibonacci extension tool so you go here pick this tool right here fibonacci extension you take that doji and you reach the top here again at 268 pull it back and then you defined your 1272 extension at 282.99. And if it really starts moving higher, so that's one area that you'd like to take, uh, to take profits. As you can see, Alibaba has been consolidating for a period of time. Once it breaks through the 268 breakout level, that's the, top, that's the wave three peak, then you know that you're in wave five and then that's going to take you up to 282.99 and then the 1618 is 302 which i've been talking about 302 is um is the uh, psychological number so i believe that alibaba is going to run up to 300 but it, it might have a little bit of trouble next week because of the j pow event so j pow might make things a little bit complicated Okay, so let's take a look at another structure. Let's take a look at the S&P. All right, so we've done this thing before where we've um, modeled the Fibonacci uh, uh, retracements and extensions for the S&P futures. And clearly you can see that back here when the market was selling off from 3,397.5, it went through a massive, massive correction, a uh, whole bunch of um, circuit breakers. But the first impulsive wave was right here, okay? And then if you wanna use the Fibonacci tool, you can retracement and then see what the pullback looked like you take the low here and then you just kind of eyeball where the top was in the in the past out of all these candles so it would obviously be this one right because it, it did pull back a little bit here so this is always in hindsight uh, but it does look like the 
pullback was around 38.2. So that gave us clues that this was the beginning of wave one and we found wave two. So wave two happened to be trading uh, at around 2,458. So after two was confirmed upon the breakout above 2,643, then we're off to the races to wave three. So you can see how long wave three has been chopping along. It's been a very choppy ride in this wave three. And if I'm correct, then if we are in a wave three, then we are we are poised to make a new 52 week high in the S&P. So let's go ahead and see where the 52 week high could be. I think I've already plotted that there. So one way you can define wave three is using the Fibonacci extension. And you take this tool right here. Uh, you take wave one, and then you take, and you model that, and you bring it down to the beginning, or the, yeah, the end of wave two. And you can see that the 1618, is at 3,177. And then the next level above 1618 is 3,000, is the 2,618. So that is uh, double that. That's that, So that's when wave five starts to kick in. So the projection here for the S&P on wave five spy is uh, 300, 3, 366, 65, I guess. I guess that would be a long-term target, not a short-term. Based on uh, Elliott Wave extensions, Fibonacci extensions and setup. So clearly we're in a wave three and it's been the, it's not the shortest. So there will be some sort of wave four and I think the wave four short term target should actually be 3,397. That'd be the double top. So My wave four begins at three thousand three hundred sixty-five. So the short-term target is three sixty-five. That's where wave four begins. Once we see the pullback on wave four, sorry, not three sixty-five. Shit, it's the double top. That's three three thousand three hundred and ninety-seven. Three thousand. Hundred and two thousand three hundred and let's say forty. Right. So once the double top, the S and P futures double tops, that's the beginning of wave four, where we'll see a pullback, and then we measure the wave four pullback using fib retracements. And as long as it doesn't pull back as low as, so this is wave four can be dangerous because it could pull back all the way down to 2,647, okay? So that's the, that's the scary part. On a wave four, if you take a look at the presentation I, I showed here on wave four. Uh, where is it? Yeah, here it is. Going back to the uh, PDF, which is located in this channel here. I'll just provide the link for everybody in the main room. So that's actually interesting. Um, when I take a look at this setup here and knowing that we have JPAL coming in 
uh, next week. I have a feeling that we might be making a double top. So I have a feeling that the SPY is going to rip up to 3,304, 340 sooner than later. So this is a, uh, where's wave three? Wave four. Rule number three. So rule number three here is the, the issue that we have. That's the, um, so we get a double top right there on the S&P. So that's going to be, um, what did I say, 3,000. The S&P made a high at 3,397. 3,397. So that's the DT, double top. And then it pulls back. So you get this pullback down here. And the problem here is this is wave one right here. So the pullback can be pretty damn deep. Okay, so you sold your spies too soon. Well, it depends on which contracts, how much time you had, but um, you can always buy the spy back for another T drive cycle and close them off on Tuesday. But um, yeah, so you had you had one more T Jeff cycle to hold through. You know that J Powell is going to make make things messy, so you could have just taken the risk and hold for another T Jeff cycle. I think we're in a wave. Uh, we're still in a wave. We're in the beginning of a wave. Oh, let me just double check that. So if we're in a wave three, yeah, we're still in a wave three. I think we're still in a wave three. Because that right there cannot be a wave three. Like this point right here. This right here. So the problem here is like, do I assume that this is my wave three? Or do I assume that we're still in a wave three? And I think we're uh, we're still in a wave three. You think we're you think we're still in a wave three? Yeah. No. No, no. We're we're still in. I think we're still in a wave three. The pullback from here on June 9th all the way down to 2,910, that could be, so you gotta, you gotta, everybody listen to what I have to say. This is very, very important. We are either in a wave three or we are in a wave five. So wave five, if we're in a wave five, uh, wave five is going to move straight up that's assume that's you're we're assuming that J Powell is going to rip the market up higher up to 3659 going into November so I don't know we don't know nobody knows when this target is gonna reach it's probably gonna reach in September 911 that's my best guess how to identify a fake wave you can't it's all hindsight analysis but you can you can kind of model it so that you can get an idea of whether or not um, I mean fake waves can happen but one way to tell is after after the candle is formed so you, one of the things I was just talking to with one of my students is that uh, when I look at all my trades almost 75% of all the mistakes I make is whenever I close a losing position intraday okay if the market is fine and not doing anything and there's no news related to the to the company that you're trading and you close your position at a loss intraday that um, is more often a mistake than not than closing them off at the end of the day so in theory you should always close your positions at the end of the day if you gotta if you have to make a decision okay but um, back to this wave analysis the the important thing here is that are we still in the not in the longest wave, wave three, because the pullback here from this point all the way down to here uh, 
is a pullback and do we consider that as wave four or do we consider are we still in a wave three because if we're in a wave three then this thing can actually from where we are right now it could go parabolic on a wave three and it just busts right through that 3,970 um, 900 3,397.5 that double top right there but I believe we are in a wave five oh no four wait, so wait, one three three four five I, I believe we're in a wave three still So wave three, if that assumption is true, then wave three will move up and retest that 52 week high at 3,397.5 and it'll print a 52 week high just briefly. And then it'll pull back and form the wave four. So this is, and if wave four happens, that's going to be a pretty interesting pullback to watch out four because the four way four can pull back as deep as so from from here it can pull back all the way down to 2,673 in theory but I don't think that's gonna happen because I mean, I don't know. Anything's possible. You got 50 day moving averages, you got 200 day moving averages. You don't have earnings anymore. Uh, but August is a very, very bullish month of the year again. So it's going to be a little bit, uh, we'll have to see. All I can do is just model the wave structure and then provide uh, some idea of what's going on with the markets. So we're 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 in. It's hard to say if we're in a wave, if we're still in a wave three or we're in a wave five. If we're in a wave five, then we got a target up to three thousand six hundred fifty nine. But uh, that would take a whole entire month. Would you say if it happened in a short, short period, it's fake? Well, <clears throat> depends on what time frame you're looking at. So you would, um, you would have to figure out daily time frame, right? So the let's let's kind of look back at why this thing pulled back the way it did back here and when we thought this was the wave three. So it pulled back hard here because of Jay Powell. So Jay Powell is coming again. And is this candle gonna form again? And did this candle define wave four? We don't know until, so that's the problem with, um, that's the problem with this, uh, the Fed. The Fed is, is controlling the structure of the market and that's the reason why it's fake. It's hard to tell. You're fighting against the Fed. I'm probably gonna fall asleep soon, so Roger, can you please take a look at Starbucks? Yeah, let's take a look at Starbucks right now. Quickly. Oh, shoot, Valgor's here. Okay, so we gotta do, this will be a short market update, but let's just do, um... <laughs> oh, wow. You, you've caught a nice one there. Um, Kaiko, so all you got to do is you got earnings right there on the 28th. So you got a nice piece of bacon. Yeah, make sure you manage your risk. Breakout is 78.1, 78.2. Just be careful of this, this, and there's a gap right there at um, 81.62. So just be careful when, when it breaks out through that ATR. Uh, uh, this is a setup for Magic Mike. So you can get this nice big green candle tomorrow, but then uh, at the end of the day, you could get a pullback that forms another magic mic. So you gotta ma actively manage your positions and probably uh, load up again uh, Thursday at the end of the day or Friday. So just be cognizant that, yeah, you got August. 
eighty dollar calls. Okay, yeah. So if you got, when did you get them? Oh, today at the open, or at the end of the day. So it looks pretty good. You, you clearly see, can see that magic mic pull there that happened yesterday. And then you got this A6. So A6 is probably gonna trigger tomorrow, time cycle one. And you just gotta be careful of the magic mic pull that, so it will turn, it could run up to maybe 78. It's If it does run up, it's gonna pierce through that ATR, trigger it, and then you're gonna be, you're, you're gonna have to manage some risk or add more. You don't want to lose that position as it's running into earnings. But then at the same time, we have J-Pow coming out. When is J-Pow coming out again? j is coming out on the 29th. Yeah, so 29th is a little bit, that's when things get a little bit messy. So that's the idea. That's uh, pretty good and there's a lot of gaps in in Starbucks so that's actually a pretty decent um, that's a pretty decent hold for through earnings as long as j -Pow doesn't mess things up but uh, yeah you gotta figure out what you're gonna afford to risk that actually looks really good I should have gone to that uh, next ticker is SPY. So I already did SPY, Valgor. So we have a target of uh, 3397 which is three, $339 by, um, by July 27th or 28th. So before the market closes, before j Powell speaks, the market can still run up higher into the, um, the announcement. Remember? So if j Powell starts is before j Powell speaks, the market could rip to try to ca catch all the longs to jump in and then dump. So that's the, the idea. The, there's a high probability that if TGIF triggers on Friday, the SPY is going to keep on ripping okay, and then doing a double top. Next ticker is MasterCard. Yeah, so MasterCard is an A6. It's a very similar pattern to Starbucks, actually. So, you know, Starbucks did this and it pulled back and then, you know, continued moving higher. And we're holding this until um, j Powell, the 28th. We're going to hold this through a TGF cycle. And then there's, there's a gap here at 335. So that's, we I mean, just hold on to it. There's nothing you can do. Next one is Boeing. So I did open up positions in Boeing and this Boeing is um, setting up for exactly what it did last time back here. And I like my risk and reward. So it's this, this period right here where it's just chopping. It's doing that again. It's just another version of it. So I took the risk and I'm gonna see what happens. And I believe we're going to get to 200 probably by the by next week, Tuesday. I'm, I'm got my money in there. Next one is BYD. So that's another position I opened up exactly six contracts just to do the uh, trend profile. And I'm looking for ET. So ET, um, if I get this run up here, I'm looking for a move up to 136.8 possibly move up to 139.8 which is tagging the 50-day moving average there is a a6 in there scanning but it's hidden but uh, we'll see what this does i might even hold this for a tgif cycle as well why not nothing to do and i did baba and i'll do google so google's earnings starts to accelerate as soon as it reaches higher here, it's been moving higher, but the premiums are not appreciating. From my from my experience with Google, the premium starts to appreciate a lot um, when it gets closer to earnings. So we have to continue holding these um, for the 20, at least up to the 28th or 29th. And uh, we'll see what happens. So we're looking to close these positions off on Tuesday or Monday. 
And that's about it. So that's the market update for now. And I'm not looking to day trading. Today was a not a very good day trading uh, environment as most people already kind of saw that the trend profile was uh, very indicating some chop. Uh, there is a couple of A6s here, Japanese Yen. So if the Japanese Yen starts to fall off the cliff, uh, then the text will start to move up higher. Uh, the semiconductors are picking up a lot of steam here, especially Intel and AMD. So that's, um, I don't know what's going on there, but uh, continue to hold your positions or and then add to them. But I've looked, I what I'm doing here is just looking to see if I can capture this big move in uh, Boeing that I've been not doing too good on, but that's something that I want to hold on to uh, at least all the way up until uh, July 28th. All right, everybody, thank you very much. This session has been recorded, and I'll up upload this as soon as it's done processing. Thank you very much, and have a good day.